Well, I'm here with Scott Weintraub, director of Paradox Effect. Hey, Scott, how's it going? It's good. Good morning. How are you? Oh, not bad. I watched this last night. I'm big fan of Olga Kurilenko. I'm watching this going, man, you're messing with Bodica, Queen of War. That can't end well for you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what was it like getting this movie together? Because I, I love the cast. You got her, Harvey Keitel. And yeah, this is good stuff. Like any movie, how they come together you know is a mystery like it's this uh this uh bizarre series of events that no one quite understands and everybody wants to understand it but really in, in this sense or in this movie the producers had seen work that i'd done and then gave me a script and then i rewrote that as much as you know within the goalposts that i was allowed and then um olga read it they were friends of her and she was like let's go so it was really quite a easy process in as much as she read the script and liked the material and so when when you're uh, looking at a script what's the difference between a script that you're like i want to shoot this versus a script that's like uh either i don't like it or maybe this is not for me this is for someone else to do there's so many good scripts right but very few great scripts Right. There's so many scripts that you read and you're like, this is a really good script. Like it does everything it's meant to do. It's good. The characters are interesting, but there's uh, there's very few scripts that you read and you're just like, this is the best script I've ever read. And that's what you're always trying to like look for. Something that there's two parts. One is that the script is has great dialogue and great character and a great approach that you just maybe haven't seen before. And two, you can see the, how you would make it, right? Because if you're watching it and you can see it through your eyes um, it, and it just like clicks, it just makes sense. And also you've worked on, uh, uh, you've worked on a bunch of things, uh, TV series. Uh, you've worked with the Silver Sun Pickups, did music videos for them. Of course, feature length movies, commercials, I imagine. What's kind of some pros and cons of each one? Pros and cons of each one. I mean, um, like, like say, like a music video versus a feature film. I'm guessing like a music video might be easy, but it's hard to wrangle people together. A uh, feature film might be difficult because it's more time consuming, that sort of thing. Well, look, uh, here's the. Here's the like growth idea, right? So you can start with a music, like anyone can make a music video, right? My first music video was maybe a few hundred bucks in terms of its budget. And it propelled me to be able to like make music videos that people actually paid me for, right? Not any, not everybody can make a commercial. You have to be, you know, at a point in which, you know, to make a real commercial with a real budget, you know, the competition is pretty active. So that's like you cut your teeth in music videos and from there you get your shot in commercials, um, et cetera. Now, TV is different. Um, the sort of TV I do is really working with, I mean, traditionally nowadays I work with, you know, known talent, like pretty big, like global talent who want to make TV shows. And um, I work with them to develop their ideas out and put the materials together. And we go and present it to whoever um, we feel is the right buyer. You know, for example, like Rihanna's uh, Savage Show for her brand Fenty. That's a Amazon project and a very successful one over there. Orlando Bloom and his series to the edge. That's a Peacock NBC series, you know, um, but you can't, uh, you can't sort of jump to the end. You have to go through the process and like do the videos, do the commercials. And that's what gets you the opportunity to like do a movie. And what, what are some uh, tools you picked up, like doing all that? What are some tools you picked up along the way that led you to the paradox effect? So for instance, let's say you do paradox effect 10 years earlier, it's probably going to be a wildly different movie just because you've grown as a filmmaker in that yeah. time. Well, the thing about paradox effects, the budget was like quite small, right? It's only a couple of million dollar budget. So, and if you think, if you think about that, like half of that went to the talent, right? Um, and then so you've got half of that to make the movie. So 
what I would say is on a, on a commercial, you maybe you have like one day for 30 seconds. We had 18 days, right? And 18 days for like, you know, a full movie. Um, it, and it's an action thriller with a car chase and fight and guns and movie stars. It's a very, very like swift pace. And shooting in Italy where the hours of shoot are like a little restrictive and challenging, what comes with your uh, your knowledge from commercials is you you know how long things take. You know what tool you need and you have your, you've tried everything out. So when you're there, like in the front line making your movie, you make all your decisions. You're not testing anything. You're making decisions that you want to happen. And sometimes there's only time for like one take because that's just how it is. But you make sure that you're able to tell the narrative as you want it even if there is only time, which a lot on Paradox Effect, there's a lot of single take work because that's the only way you could do it in that time frame. And do you get a lot of uh, rehearsal time before then or is the is the rehearsal time and the shooting time the exact same thing? You don't get on a movie of this size, you don't get rehearsal time. So, you know, if you're looking at a Marvel movie or, 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 or a movie by, um, you know, a movie of like, I just watched Dumb Money, right? Dumb Money, Craig Gillespie, right? They would have had the talent there way before. And they would have really like built out and been able to sort of discuss together what they felt their characters were and have a couple of weeks rehearsal. On a movie like this, talent arrives on Thursday. They like on Friday they get dressed and styled. You you'll take them to um, do a little bit of like fight choreography for later in the movie, and on Saturday you start right. So the week so you you're start you've started right. So that's it. There is there is no rehearsal. You like are into it, but you get the opportunity to zoom and make calls and that's like super key because you can build a rapport and a real like understanding with the with the talent and really make sure that even though you're not going to be you're going to be faced with a very short shoot window and um time together you can build that character long before you even get to set but that's amazing that you can even pull that off because actually in this really good and to just show up on set, okay, now we're shooting the action scene. Here's the, like, that That just seems like so much work in such a low amount of time. That's correct. <laughs> That's 100% correct. It's a lot of work in a lot in a very short amount of time. It's so like the, the, the stunts and the action you have in here is pretty, pretty well done. How are you able to choreograph all that and focus all that down in such a, does a stunt team, like, do they have ideas of what they want to do and then just throw the actors into it or how does that work? So I've done a lot of car commercials, so I know how to like make action, right? I know how to design action. So whether it's cars or people, like action's the same, right? It's the same approach and your likes of how to shoot it, you know, whether it's a person going through frame at speed or a car, it's the same thing. So how I, I designed and choreographed certain like the car chase like i have a very limited time to design that i didn't i don't need anyone to help me with designing a car chase i've just done so many car commercials right but when it comes to um and really it's a case of like how far can i push it right when there's a pretty like awesome car crash and explosion like it's really a case of how many cameras can we get in there? How close to the action are we allowed to get, right? For safety purposes, right? Because you can't do it on your own and you have to do it with the team and the stunt team. And there'll be, you know, it's between like you guys discuss together because the bigger the explosion, the further away you stand, right? Yeah. That's kind of like the idea. So you, if, if you're saying you do that. Well, you know. There's like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like the rules are there for a reason to keep everybody safe. And like, you never push the rules. You just push like what's possible with, um, with cameras and, um, you know, whether they're manned or not, et cetera. But like, these are all things that you just know for experience. And if you have a short amount of time to 
achieve these um, aspects or these key shots, you you better have the experience to like make the decisions that that gets the frame really like makes um, the movie elevated and never once puts anybody in any kind of like difficult situation. Yeah. And so when you get the script and I'm sure you're experienced enough that uh, you're just, you mentioned you did kind of uh, sort of little rewrites on it. I'm sure you look at the script and you know how much time you have. And it's like, I would love to put the scene. This is absolutely not going in there. There's no way we can do this properly. So if that's out or uh, maybe we'll swap it with this, like what, what, what are some scenes that may have been in the script, the paradox effect that you would have loved to shoot, but there just wasn't the time or money to do so. Oh, that's like a good, that's a good question. I mean, you know, there's a scene like towards the end where we sort of get into this like third act, like final shootout. Right. And there was a part where, our character Kovac jumps from a very a severe, like a massive height and rolls, followed by Olga's character Karina. Now that to do that stunt and to do that safely and to do that, you know, in a way that is really impactful, takes a that would take a day to do, at least, right? To have some to have people jump from an incredible height, even if it's half a day, that's not some that's not time we had, right? To do half a day dedicated to you know one shot so although in the like script there's an awesome part where harvey's character is you know shooting at them or sees them and they like they run up to an elevation and then like they you know he's like coming that way so they have to jump that's something that i chose not to shoot i didn't think we needed it and i felt that um keeping it at ground level. Um, the location really gave us everything we needed for that cat and mouse chase. And also you've done, uh, you've done some producing, some stuff you produced that you've directed, uh, other stuff you directed, and sometimes you just produce. I always ask what the job of the producer is, but that's just a silly question because there's like a thousand different answers for that. But what's your job as a producer? Like what what's your mindset when going into a project as a producer? Well, I'm normally the creative, so I normally like have like designed the show or written the show, and they give me a producer credit. So that's why. So I like direct, or I'll like write whatever the idea is. So that's why I get given a producer credit, as you've um, you know outlined. There's different types of producers. Some are uh, you know executive producers typically will be involved in setting up a project and be very active in where the finance and where the uh, you know, movie stars have come from. Um, producers are typically more like running the day-to-day -day of a movie or a TV series, right? They'll be the ones like making sure everything's moving and everyone, the team is like the best team and the right team and making sure director is happy and following what he needs to and got what he needs. And then in terms of EP or exec producers, I sometimes get that role as well or that kind of credit for setting the whole thing up or being the uh, the creative behind the whole project. I also wanted to ask, because uh, I watched the short, the Kim Basinger Danger. I like that a lot. What what was that? Where did that come from? And how did that come about? I mean, you're, you're, you're going into the archives, right? So A little bit. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I was, I mean, I started out in fashion, so I was an assistant photographer for, you know, when I was a kid and was meant to be at school, but would go and paint the, what they call the cove, like the studio. And then eventually I was like assistant photographers, some pretty good ones, right? I don't know, Jean-Baptiste Mondino and David Sims and lots of other ones and Rankin and all sorts of cool ones like that. Part of that, that's where I sort of learn about photography and Flaunt is a magazine in Los Angeles that has that incredible creative ethos that you just don't really see. It's creativity over like commerce. And they were going to be shooting. They, um, David LaChapelle wanted to shoot a piece. And they said, hey, would you like to do this with David? So I shot, you know, I spent a week with David. And then after, straight after that, they called me and said, hey, look, we're going to do this thing with Kim Bassinger out at like um, the church from Kill Bill. 
And um, I was like, let's go. And I think everybody was quite scared of Kim Basinger because, you know, she's a legendary movie star. And I sort of said to her, I sort of, you know, you've got to like take your chance, right? And I said to her, look, the only way we're going to do this, that you're going to love it, is we've got to get rid of everybody. Because she has quite the team, right? Uh, yeah. look, look, lots of like people around. And she said, everybody go. And we shot something pretty special. Um, I love that piece. I think it's a really, really cool piece. And um, I know she liked it as well. And um, what was that? Because I, I was watching this knowing I was going to interview you. And I was like, man, this interview with Kim Basinger is so good. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pale in comparison. But what what was the process? Was that all written or was someone just interviewing her? Or how, how did that the the stuff that she was saying where did where did that come from? I think sometimes with someone that you have like Kim Basinger is probably an easier interview because she's so damn famous, right? And with her, it was more a case of finding like a gap in her armor, if you like. So when we, I you know when we asked her about what does danger mean to her. Right. I think with that as well, you can get a bit more artistic in the questions, right? Because flaunt lends itself to that. And she, it just really gravitated. She just, she really connected with that question, right? It, the answer was so beautiful that it was easy to cut round by that answer. I suppose we'll end on this. Just want to know a movie recommendation from you. Maybe uh, something like lesser known, like a movie that's like, this movie's really good and I wish more people would talk about it. A movie that's really good, lesser known. I mean, I watch a lot of movies and I watch a lot of big commercial movies because like, I'm more of a like big um, mass type director than like a sort of like, you know, something that only a small group would watch. But, you know, I, uh, for those that haven't seen La Haine, I I feel that that's like the pinnacle of like cinema for me. It means the hate in English. It's Matthew Kasovitz's first film. It stars Vincent Cassell and it is so damn good. It, you know, and what well, he never gets in the list of like greatest filmmakers of all time, but that certainly is one of the greatest films of all time. I, I would probably agree with that. But uh, Scott, thanks for joining me today. Paradox Effect comes out on uh, release by Paramount on September 24th on digital. That is already passed. So yeah, you can go watch it. And I hope everyone does, especially for Olga Korolenko. It's always great to see her in things. 